Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Trofin at the Babbling Belgian, and welcome back to Gwentech. Today, we're gonna do something new. Because uh, usually, if you've, uh, you're familiar with this show, we look at interesting decks to play around with. Homebrew decks that are not quite meta decks, but are useful and fun to play with. But today, I'd like to actually look at one of our meta decks. So if you haven't checked out Team Elderblood's snapshot just yet, just go do that right now and I'll be still here. But today, we're going to look at one of those specific decks from the snapshot. So not one that I made, but one that one of our team members actually created specifically for the meta snapshot. And today, we'll be looking specifically at the Precision Strike Squiatel deck from our meta. Um, well, from our meta snapshot, which uh, also, of course, includes Shiru. It's a very, very aggressive but consistent deck that allows you to just overwhelm your opponent and take out even bigger threats. So let's run through the cards really quickly. We have Magic Lamp as our stratagem. And now we have on Aromancy for consistency, of course, being able to twice play any card from our deck. Forest Protector, as always, very, very powerful. Karate Heatwave, as usual, to take out those bigger threats. And then we have Novigradian Justice. So Novigradian Justice, you should be using that to get out the Volunteers. So the Volunteers are over here, the Mahakam Volunteers. That, well, if you use Novigradian Justice with the Volunteers, you'll pull both of them out of the deck, giving you at least 13 points, because of course, Novigradian Justice also spawns a Cleaver's Muscle for five power. But with the All Gold card, you can actually boost those volunteers in your deck uh, to six each, and then you get 17 points in one go with Novigradian Justice. So All Gold is here to provide you a lot of carryover. Uh, carryover that should be either put on something like Sheldon Skaggs, a very good target to boost in hand, which you should be boosting with some of the other cards as well. And then of course the Volunteers and the Sentinels. The Sentinels will be also pulled from the deck with Precision Strike. Adding to that same consistency, we also have Isengrim's Council, allowing you to pull a random Dwarf Triad or Elf from your deck and boost it by two. Um, as with my Devotion Shiro deck, this is also this deck is also set up so you always pull Shiro with Isengrim's Council. So Shiro is the crux of this deck. Um, and Shiro still allows you to destroy himself and all the units that have the same power as himself in one fell swoop on order ability. So you could postpone that, but it's not recommended. And you'll see, uh, we'll show you in a second how you can perfectly use that Shiro. Then back is Rockslide again, pulling in that aggression with an eight damage hit on anything that you want to destroy on the other side of the field. Sheldon, we talked about that as well. Boost them in hand and you'll be able to damage an enemy unit by the amount he was boosted on deploy. Fov is another one of our... Oh, that was a bit wrong. Fov is another one of our tutors, so pulling a nature card from our deck. They're a bit more focused in this deck. Uh, giving you nature's rebuke for 5 damage and a 2 point boost on the 3 and if you have one and you manage to kill something. Circle of life, again, adding to the health, uh, but the hand boosting. Um, and then Dryad's Caress uh, for just a Purify and a Boost, Tempering and Pact. Pact is not a nature card, but it's still in here as well. And then of course we have Harold Gord, boosts himself by one for every special card you played this game, which uh, ramps up rather quickly in this deck because of the, um, well, just the plenty amount of special cards in this deck, because there's 12 and you might even get the 13 with Oneromancy pulling that twice. Um, and that's basically it. We also have a few agitators to boost, usually uh, Sheldon in hand, so he gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And then just a minor just to wrap that up. And that's basically it. Um, let's head into an example match, because that's gonna show you how to use this deck and how to win, hopefully. So the most important phase when using this deck is the mulligan phase, because there's a lot of things that can actually um, be problematic if you keep those cards in your hand. So right now, for example, we have a Sentinel in our hands, but we can't do anything with that Sentinel. We want to pull that with Precision Strike ourselves. So let's get rid of that Sentinel. And we also don't really have a good target for the Agitator. Um, so might as well get rid of the Agitator as well. Although we could put the Agitator on Gorge, giving us a nice finisher at the end. So let's get rid of Pact now. And we get a a volunteer that's a really bad hand to start with but uh, I guess we'll have to make it work 
Um, we're still in the advantage in that we're second, so we're on red coin right now. Um, which means that we can start out really, really slow and just focus on doing some hand boosting uh, first. So let's just play the Dwarven Agitator, put that on the Volunteer. Because we will be able to pull the Volunteers later with uh, Nova Gradient Justice. Um, so anything that we can put on those Volunteers and just mulligan them later is fine. And then we get Dunka. Dunka I'm probably going to get boosted by 5? Or not. Yeah, boosted by 5. And not by the Dwarven Agitator. Okay. Uh, the Dwarven Miner. You know what? Since that Dwarven Miner hasn't been used anyway, uh, let's just use Nature's Rebuke on that Miner and let's get rid of that. And just start playing really passively because this deck is all about playing passively. Um, the only really differences that you make is with Novigrading Justice is an active play. You play those volunteers out of your hand. Um, but aside from that, the Treehand uh, Protector is also really powerful. But, aha, uh -huh, we got Vitality on the Treehand um, Ore, which is actually good because that keeps it out of range of another uh, Nature's Rebuke. There's really not a lot that we can do. I could Korati the Dunka. But even with that, I think we should just focus on doing um, hand boosting. Even though there's not much we can actually hand boost. But um, yeah, Circle of Life on Dunka. And that boosts the fourth. But yeah, there's not much else we can do at the moment. Um, aside from... Yeah, because even Overgrading Justice isn't the, the point potential that it could be. Um, so yeah, just, just play it calm, play it slow. There's nothing uh, urging us along. We're going to play that second Circle of Life to just end that off. Um, and then I think I'm just going to pause because right now there's not much use in to keep going. I could just use the carryover from the circle of life. But other than that, yeah, there's not much use in me continuing. Uh, and even if we get a pass after our uh, next card, we could still pull this out if you want to. And we get Isengrim's Council already, so that's an extra nature card. So that's going to give him, yeah, that. And we get extra armor on... The boar. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna use another um, circle of life on Dunka just to have them think that I'm gonna do something else. Which I'm not, but there we go. And then we got a Dryad's Caress. That's gonna purify probably on Dunka, right? Yeah, there we go. And we get hit there, so let's just pass. Yeah, there's not much we could do there. Our hand was really, really bad. Um, even though we avoided most of the mulligan problems. Um, but yeah, that's the, the most important thing with this deck. You need to have a good hand. So you need to either start uh, thinning some things or using older cards to get around that. So for example, right now, yeah, this is really bad. Um, we want to get rid of those sentinels because we can't really use the sentinels. Um, but just in case we need to, I'm going to get rid of the volunteer. And we get Sheldon. Okay, better than nothing, I suppose. I would have liked on their romance, um, But yeah, we're not really lucky at this point. We haven't got any of the good cards either. We still have all gold on their romance, Shiro, and Becker's Rock Slide in the deck. So it's not ideal. Um, but again, I could use Novigrade Injustice to just pull ahead. Not that I'm gonna want to, I think. Yeah, so there we go. Go Novigrade Injustice from our opponent. And we get those Mahakam Volunteers. Not that much of a problem, I think. Um, and we can play the Miner first. And then I think I might actually go for... If our opponent passes now, which they don't. They don't. That is interesting. Um, okay, I'm kind of confused now. Um, I could do the same thing with Nova Gradient Justice. This gets me one point ahead. That's going to force him to just keep going either way. Um, but yeah. What else nature card-wise do we have? We have another Nature's Rebuke. Nothing much else. So let's just play 
No great injustice as well. And get the volunteers out over here. That gets us one point ahead. Other than that, yeah. We're in a bit of a pickle here. Shaping nature, so that's the echo card from Scoyatel. A nine point boost. This is such a weird match. Um, I think I'm probably better off already using one of my charges, right? Uh, I could go with six with the sentinels, but I want to use the sentinels in the last round. Isn't Grim's Council is perfect to pull Shiru? So we don't want to waste that, and we don't really have any other targets either way. Um, so I think... Yeah, let's just use one charge of Precision Strike. Use the, the Forest Protector to then get a Circle of Life out. And kill that one volunteer and boost Sheldon. So that gets us three points ahead again. Because I can't really use Shiru at the moment either, because we're basically using the same, the same guards. Because there's Fov, and we get Fov and Tempering. So that's going to go on the Volunteer, there we go. We could basically do the same thing. It would be better if we had another Circle of Life, but we don't. So I think the Tempering is going to be better either way. Um, so let's just put... We also have Nature's Rebuke, but there's no real target for Nature's Rebuke. We could get 6 points with... The Dryad's Caress. Um, but yeah, let's just go with the Tempering. Uh, five point boost on the... Actually, this guy. Because now... Um, Shiru is still an option if we want to. It's not that good of an option, but it's still an option. Especially if we get like something like a Dryad right now. Um, like the, the Hammer Dryad. Because that's what I'm, I'm trying to do right now. I'm, I'm staying just ahead, just slightly ahead, and then we get the force protected. That's that's a bigger problem. And a nature's rebuke. Okay, so I could go with Sheldon now. Sheldon is ten points that would just keep us under. Ah, uh, but I need to be careful because there's nothing else I really can do. Um, I think it's the best play right now. So either we play the Sentinel on the Forest Protector, but that's not going to help us too much. Uh, the Tree and Protector. I think I'm just going to use Sheldon now. Um, Sheldon, two points on the Tree and Protector. And that gets him one step closer to five. But now we're also just slightly behind. Yeah, that's good. Because now I'm going to use the uh, Sentinel that I still have in my hand. And not pull uh, the other sentinel from the deck. Um, there we go. So that just gets us slightly ahead. But I don't pull that other sentinel. Because I want to pull that other sentinel with precision strike in a minute. Okay. That's pretty good. Uh, so we have a Kodati Heatwave to take out one of the big Dryads. If we still get one, we get a Dwarven Agitator right now. Uh, we do start out first. So we need to be... Careful, what do I still have in deck? Uh, I still have all gold. <laughs> um, fair enough. Um, but there's a lot better cards than this. So let's just do this. Yeah, and then the Sentinel. Yeah, okay. Okay, that's fine. Um, let's start out with the Agitator. It's basically the only thing we really can do. And put the Agitator on Harold. There we go. So that's a good start. We could very well get Circled of Life now, because this is almost a mirror, aside from the, uh, the Precision Strike. And we get Onneromancy, which we haven't gotten at all. But that's good, that's a Hammer Dryad. Um, that Hammer Dryad is going to go up to 8 in a minute, so might as well use Pact. Yeah, let's just use Pact over there. Play it slow, play it careful. That's nine points that can be taken out, but again, we can return the favor if we want to. And we got Becker's Rock Slide. So we're going to return the favor for that one, because um, now the Hammer Dryad reached eight points. We're going to do the same thing. 
and just play as passively as they are. So yeah, they're basically using a similar deck with similar cards. Um, the problem is that I'm going to end up with Gord. Um, and they don't have a similar issue because they can play Gord at, as their final cards. But yeah, you see them struggling with the same issues I'm struggling with. I don't think it's going to be useful playing Shiru anymore. Um, which is sad because of course Shiru is the most, the coolest card in this deck to use. But I feel like we're not going to be able to. Um, we're only one point ahead as well, so keep that in mind. There's Gord. That is... That is interesting. So Gord, I'm just going to karate that, right? Because that's 12 points. Um, yeah, okay. That might have been a misplay. Or there, there must be nothing in their hand. They probably have the same issue that you can have with this deck. And that's shaping nature on nothing. Oh, wow. And there we have the the one tree end that we basically need. Um, yeah, there's not much else we can pull, so I'm going to have to pull Shiro anyway. He might as well get rebuked after that, but... Hmm. Interesting. So, basically, we're going to play Shiro now, but Shiro is going to do nothing. Because, um, yeah, Shiru is five points. I'm guessing they still have a Nature's Rebuke in their hands. And that's what they're waiting for. It's probably Nature's Rebuke and a Koralti Heatwave, I suppose. This is a weird match. And now we have Elias. Oh, wow, we have Elias. Oh, yeah, that is. Yeah, that's not, that's not going to be good, is it? I don't think it is worth it. I could take him out, but that's just a five for five, so that doesn't really matter. I still have that five, those five points. I could take out the vi the one point in vitality, but it's not really gonna matter, is it? Um, no, I'm just gonna do oh, one over here, um, oh, one over here, and then I'm gonna be able to play that final Brooklyn Sentinel, take out the Archer over there. And then just play uh, Gourds. So now if the last card is Karate, actually lost by one point. Um, but again, I wouldn't have gotten the points from the extra Sentinel, so I'm guessing this is Karate. Is it? Is it not? Yeah, there we go. That was uh, very well played. Very well played. Uh, I couldn't have gotten over that, so that was... Uh, that was a very peculiar match. Um, but yeah, that's the uh, the Team Elderblood Metal Snapshot Shiro Precision Strike deck. Yeah, that's a whole mouthful. Um, and don't, don't forget to GG, guys. Um, so there we go. So against certain decks, this deck is really, really strong. Um, you saw that even in a mirror, we could um, carry ourselves through all that. We just got a really unlucky with that last uh, pull there. Uh, our opponent was really smart in playing those cards in that order. But uh, yeah, that was the first episode of Gwentech Meta Test, because that's what we're going to call this new show, uh, where we try to look at a meta deck every single week. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. I also took a lot of time this week to rebrand the channel. Hopefully you guys noticed that already. You might have already noticed right here because there's a new logo uh, for me. So Trophy Nut has been rebranded. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, if you have any feedback on this deck, let us know in the comment section down below. And as I said before, check out Team Elderblood's Snapshot on their website. The link is also going to be in the uh, description of this video. So thank you guys enormously for watching and hope to see you in the next episode of Gwentage. Goodbye!